Hello again. This is Uncle Aro wearing the playwright hat. Today we will be talking about page object models again. The reason I'm doing this video again is because in my last video, some of the comments that I got was it wasn't very clear. And I thought, why not give you a real world example? So today in this example, I've got a website called Vision Express. What I'm doing is I'm going to a booking an appointment functionality of that website where I need to book an eye test. I start from the home page and I go to the date time picker in the Vision Express. This way I will be able to demonstrate how I can create page object models, what techniques I use to identify what are the page objects and what are the actions, what are the locators and we'll go through that together. So stay tuned. So this is the Vision Express website as you can see on your screen. This website has got a book and appointment button at the top. If I click on this button, it takes me to a journey. Here in this journey, I can basically select a store where I need to book an appointment. If I type London, it gives me a location and it loads certain areas in London. So if I select London Oxford Street, it takes me to a what question. So where, what and when. So the what question is what type of appointment you want to book. I'm selecting adult eye test. So it takes me to when. And this is where it shows me the date time picker and the availability for the appointment for that particular store. So this is what we are going to do. Like we are going to write a test for this using page object model. This is a real world example. As you can see, this website is in production visionexpress.com. And I'm going to write a test for this random website. So before I start to write any code, I basically draw it out in some sort of drawing tool like draw.io. First of all, this is my home page. This is my first block, which is saying that well, from home page to the wizard that you saw where it had the options where, what and when, it, you need an action to go to that wizard. And the action is this button, book an appointment. So when I click on this button, it takes me to the book an appointment wizard. So this is my action from home to where. Now from where uh, I need to select like a location. I need to then, the, the location basically takes me to the what, which is where I select the adult eye test. So where is where I select London. And then what is where I select adult eye test. And then it takes me to the date time picker, which is this one, which is in the when. So we will be writing page objects for home, where and what. And I'll not be covering when in this video. So the main purpose of this video again is to write page object models. So let's start with that. So I have got some code over here, which I copied from the website playwright.dev. So if I go to playwright.dev and I select page object models, here you can see the basic implementation. It has got the imports, exports, constructor, go to and others. So I copied the imports, export, constructor, and then I got rid of everything else. I kept the read only page, which is over here. So every page object model can get a page in the constructor, which is what I'm getting over here. So similarly on this website, there's this page equal to page. I've kept it over here. This page is equal to page. Now, if you remember my diagram, we had home from home. I'm clicking on book appointment to go to where page. So this is my action. So I need an action, right? So my action over here is book appointment button. Now remember when you're working with a website or when you're creating the actions within your page object model, page object model is your API for the page. So it describes what elements are you interacting with on the page. So if I go to visionexpress.com, the elements that I'm interacting on this page is just this button, not everything else. So my page object model is covering only one element and you can just see it from line number five that I'm only interested in book appointment button and I'm using a locator to locate that piece on the page. So this is how I'm linking this piece of code with the actual page. And the way I link it is in the constructor. I say page dot locator and this is the class name for that button. So if I do inspect element, you should be able to see the class name for that button uh, site nav underscore underscore appointment somewhere. So site nav underscore underscore apartment. So this is, as you can see, if I highlight over it, you can see the class. So that, that's how I am creating a locator, linking this locator with this button. And the reason I've used press rather than click in the name of the action is because it can be on any screen. So when you're designing your page object model, you design it for all screens. On a mobile, you can press it. On a website, you can click it. So always make sure your design for page object models is also mobile first. Then another thing is, Every page object model, like for me, I, I keep a standard function, go to. Uh, this is also describing the documentation. It has a go to function. So the go to function basically is a link to the actual page of that page object model. So if I call the go to function, it will take me to the Vision Express website. So this is a home. So if how am I using this in, in here in my test? I've got a test called has title and I've created a page object. Notice that I'm not using fixtures over here. Fixtures can make your life a, a bit more easy, like you can just do 
HP here and it will give you the home page. You, you wouldn't have to do this if you are using fixtures. But for now, because we are not using fixtures, I wanted to make it as simple as possible because my last explanation was slightly uh, complex because I think uh, I mixed fixtures with the page object models. So I've got the home page, homepage.pom and I'm bringing that into the test, new home page. I'm, I'm doing a dot go to and I basically visit that website and verify the title. So that's very straightforward. So that's how I'm using home page page object model. Now, what about the other page object? So if you look at the diagram again from home, I go to where page. So if I want to go back into the test, this is my home page. I, I did the same thing that I did in a previous test. I did a go to. So I'm on the Vision Express uh, main website over here. Then I need to click on a book appointment button. So HP dot press book appointment button. As you saw in my home page, I had this press function, which does a click and it does HP dot book appointment button. So I've already done that. Now it will take me to the next page, which is the where page here. I want to enter the location, right? So this is a new page. Then we will create a new page object. So this is a book appointment where page book appointment where page and notice I'm not using the URL just to do the where, what and when I'm just using a logical breakdown of the pages because after the where, when I enter the value, the state of the page changes, the page changes. So it's up to you how you do the breakdown as well. So I've called it book appointment where page. Similarly, I will have book appointment what page, book appointment when page and book appointment who page, uh, all those four page object models. It keeps things manageable. So again, we have got the read only page. We are passing the page and we are setting this page equal to page. Now, because I want to enter something in the autocomplete box, like by type London, this is where I want to enter the value. So I need the I basically ID or class of this box. And I also need the ID or class of this as well. So there are two different locators I need. So I've got store search autocomplete box. That's the first locator, which is the I which is this box and autocomplete suggestion first item is this item over here so i have done the same thing over here page dot locator store search store search is the id of this which should be let's see store search here you go so you can see id is store search and then similarly for the first autocomplete if i do inspect element you can see that it says the id is autocomplete suggestion item one autocomplete suggestion item one. So those are the two IDs that I have assigned. So I've got it over here. Now the only thing remaining was to create actions for them. So fill the value. What value? The value is being passed from the test. So if I go back to the test, uh, I've got the book appointment web page. I'm doing fill and I'm sending the value to London. Then I'm selecting the first autocomplete suggestion, which is this select, uh, first autocomplete suggestion dot click. And then there you go. It will basically select the values. So let's try to run this test and see what they look like. So I'm going to run this test in my browser. So I've clicked on show browser over here. I will click on play here and I'm going to put a breakpoint here just to show you how this is working. So it has opened a new browser. You can see, hold on, uh, let, let's, let's just do it again. It was really fast. So we didn't get a chance to notice it. So I'm going to stop this test and we will go through it again and notice that there's a cookie pop-up and i'm not handling that cookie pop-up because it's, it's not stopping me so I'm, I'm not interacting with it within this test but if, if it was stopping me i would have interacted with it the best practice is to basically uh interact with it but it, it's a bug in the application so right now i'm just going to ignore that so it goes to the vision express enters the value london and then you can see london as a store and because of the first autocomplete selection you can see all the items here so let's do it slowly. So from fill, I'm going to do a debug mode. So it has opened the window. It took me to the first debug option. Now, if I do step over, let me just bring this on the side. If I do step over, then you can see it, it enters the value London and it goes to the next bit, which is select. Now it, it will select this option as, as soon as I do step over. I did a step over, it selected the value and you can see the page. Now it's going to expect the title of the page, which is just true because we have already validated that. So there you go. That's an example of two page object models. So we will write another one now. So I'm going to copy the where 
I'm going to rename this into what. Let's keep that over there. We don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to type what inside it. Because we are not going to the what page just yet, we still need to finish the test. So to go to the what page, I need to select one of these values. So I need another locator for this. So let's do inspect element. This is the wrapper. So is there like a element like which selects the first item or second item? Let's see. So this is the search results. In the search results, this is data type, location result, location list. So if I want to select the first ally, all, all of these allies have the same class. So I can copy this class and I will bring into where and let's create a locator. So let's call it location list first item. And in here, I'm going to write this dot location list first item is equal to page dot locator and we already know the class it didn't copy it correctly so i'm going to copy it again and because it's a class it will have a dot in front of it now because there are many items that will come back i'm going to do dot first so it will select the first item from that list now we need to click on that item so i, I will create an action for it so the way you create an action is similar to this. So I will copy the name, location, first item. And I will replace this, make the L capitalize, location, first item dot click. And within the test, I will have another action, which is location first item now it doesn't make sense because it's just saying location first item so i will add the verb select and i will copy this verb back into where select location first item. i already had the verb over here so that's fine so select location first item so it will select the autocomplete then it will select the location first item so let's see if that worked i'm going to go back and run this test again this time i'm going to select the trace viewer and I will stop any previous tests that are running continuously. And let's run this again. So it is running something now. Let me close down all the other browsers. So quit Chromium. Visual Studio Code Editor was doing something else in the background, so it was still connected. Now it has opened up the Trace Viewer, so I'll click on Play Test and open the Trace Viewer. Here you can see that it is running the test in the same way that we wanted. On the right hand side, you can see that it has taken us to the what page. That is where the test ended. So to do the th same thing for the what page, you will basically go to the website. So I'm gonna just open a new tab, Vision Express Book Appointment, enter the value London, select the first option here. Because it I had previously selected one of the options, um, it didn't take me to the what page, it took me to the van page. So this is how the application is behaving. If you already had selected an eye test appointment, it remembers it. So that's why from where it jumped to the van. So that is why I had to go back and select it correctly. Now in the, in the what page, I've got only one item that I need to select. I will pick that item, which is this. And I'm assuming there are multiple allies. As you can see here, I'm just selecting the first option here. You can always optimize your test. You don't have to uh, pick the locators like I'm picking because this is just a very simple demo video. I'm trying to keep things very straightforward and simple. So let's see if i just i'll just use this one so and it's a class so it's a dot and let's call it appointment type list so for let's call it 
first appointment type list item and you can see that there are multiple so i'm going to just do dot first we don't need the autocomplete so i'm going to get rid of the autocomplete so select first or apartment type item list we don't need the go to function in here because go to is happening automatically we didn't need the go to function in the previous one as well so i'm going to get rid of the go to function from both of them and this is a what page so i will import that what page here in my test what page and in this journey i will do constant p w p names are not great i know about it you can argue with your team on over the best namings i know i have done it multiple times so it's it's a, it's a fun activity i'll leave, leave that for you and if i go back to the what page select what page is what i'm interested in so select and that should do the trick so it should take me to the uh, last page which is where we can see the uh, the when page basically where we can see the daytime picker so home page go to the home page click on the book appointment button go to the where page enter the value london pick the first item from the box then select the first location item from the list london oxford street then go to the what page in the what page select adult items that's what this test is doing so let's see if it actually does that so I'm going to click on play. This should show me the test running here. Enters London, value select London and takes me to the van page. As you can see, it, it happened so fast that you, we were not able to see it. So let's make sure that we are actually going to the what page. So I'm going to add a breakpoint here and run this test again. So it opens the browser, takes me to the breakpoint. That's my first breakpoint. So I'm going to Go, do a step over so it takes me to the next breakpoint i'm going to do a step over let's just go next basically i went deep into the function so that's why it's taking me to the whole thing so there you go um, now it has taken me to the what page as you can see and this is where i've got adult eye test so i will try to put them side by side and let's see if i do next it should select the value and it did and then you can see it went to the van page i'm going to just stop this test and then we'll do a very quick summary to summarize what i've done is i've created three page object models home page where page and what page i've used these page object models within the test i imported the where page home page and book apartment what page this was a very simple home page test this is a very simple journey from home page to book appointment where page to what page i'm not doing the correct expect here expect is something that you would need to identify yourself like what do you want to expect on on this page uh, and that's that's how you use page object models remember you don't put any expect statements within the page objects itself the only purpose of this page object model is to locate things or have some actions within it it's just a basic api which shows you what actions you can perform on the page and what other elements on the page Hope that helps. Thank you.